Hey guys, welcome back. This is my newly acquired Traxxas Revo 3.3. I was able to get a fantastic deal on eBay. I paid $110 for this on auction. Now I did take a gamble. There was actually no condition listed on the auction. It didn't come with a remote. I programmed my own FlySky remote. Uh, it is a risk when you buy a car like this on eBay, but I'll tell you this, this RC runs perfect. I'm gonna show you some footage at the end of the video uh, of how this runs and you will just be amazed. So let me take off the body and let's talk a little bit about this model. This is the Revo 3.3. Basically this is the updated version of the original 2.5R Traxxas Revo which came out in 2004 and I did own the original 2.5R. And I gotta say to this day, that is one of my favorite RCs. Uh, when this model came out, it was just revolutionary. At that time, remote control nitro cars uh, all had flat pan chassis. If you look at this one, it is just, well, you can't tell right now, but it is very, very contoured. Even the way the engine is mounted, it's uh, inboard. All that end the interesting chassis layout, the suspension was revolutionary. So these have uh, inboard shocks right here. So front and rear inboard shocks. Um, the benefit of that is when you don't have the shocks on the front suspension, you also don't risk damaging uh, the shocks as much. And I gotta say, I've never damaged the shocks in this RC or my old Revo 2.5, which I bashed a lot. But in my Stampede and Slash, it seems like the shock shafts in the front are constantly bent. So also, you have incredible uh, suspension movement. You look at that, just incredible. So to this day, Traxxas uses the Revo spec, uh, I guess nameplate for a lot of the RCs, including um, the X01 and many of the other performance models. And this is where it started. It started with the Traxxas Revo. This particular one, um, I was able to get it to run and it runs great. I've done one modification to it and that was to remove the dual steering setup. So you have uh, two servos on this RC. You have one here and you're supposed to have one here. As a matter of fact, let me show you the original servos. These were the original servos. So I just removed two of them and replaced them with one Tyro Pro servo. And I gotta say, this Tower Pro MG995, if you guys don't know, is one of the best budget servos. It steers this RC incredibly. Let me actually give you a demonstration. I'll put it on, and you guys will see that even on the table, look at that, it could steer fine. Look at that, even planted on the table. If I lift it, look at that, even the speed is good. So, Fantastic servo, if you ever need them, they're about six to eight dollars on eBay. If you buy them in bulk, you can get prices as low as five dollars. Um, so what else is there to say about this RC? Actually, uh, a lot, there is a lot to say. Um, years ago, this RC competed with a lot of the eighth scale models, mainly the associated MGT, Lossy LST, uh, and some other .21 big block engines. This was always a small block, even though this is not the original engine. Uh, this used to be either a 0.15 or 0.18 displacement. So it's a small block. No matter how you put a small block, rear exhaust. Uh, this particular one has a pull start, which I'm really happy about. I don't have to deal with the roto start or any of the Traxxas Easy Start systems. Uh, it starts really well. But the reason I'm happy about that is this fuel. So I have a gallon of gas right next to me. This is 20% nitro fuel. Uh, price recently went up. So I remember paying $25 a gallon for this. Uh, $25 a gallon is, is not bad, you know, basically that could last you about a year if you run sparingly, which I did. So the other day I paid uh, $38 for this at the same hobby store. So prices went up a lot. And if you had a .21, let's say something like an off the monster pirate or HPI Savage, those things used to basically take twice as much fuel as a small block engine. Um, they weren't really that much faster. They did have more torque, but they weren't that much faster. This one is uh, rated at 45 miles an hour, and I'll tell you this, it does hit 45 miles an hour. It has a two-speed automatic transmission. This particular one has the Opti drive right here removed, so there is no Opti drive. I'm really happy about that, and it also doesn't have reverse. I remember the original 2.5s, and to this day, the 3.3s do have reverse and do have Opti drive. Uh, which basically is a system to opti drive. It's pretty ingenious. This was the first RC that I remember that had an electronically controlled, well, at least a form of electronic control reverse. So you had a third channel and you had a third servo. But what would happen is you would have to first stop. The car would have to detect that you were in fact stopped and only then can you engage a reverse. 
Prior to that, on many other RCs, you could easily just engage reverse accidentally while still moving forward. And yes, that would totally blow up your transmission. So that was the end of that. Uh, tracks is sort of a way, and, and it did work. I remember on a 2.5, it worked really well. I just didn't particularly care for it. And on nitro trucks, it is actually kind of rare to even use reverse. But when you have it, it, it is pretty nice. The two speed in this thing is really good. It shifts. I was surprised when I ran it that it actually shifted. Usually when you buy used RCs like this, the two speed almost never shifts. Even if you adjusted the clutches inside are usually broken. Um, this engine, I love it. Uh, the reason is OS engines are known to be some of the best engines in the industry. This is a five port design on the 18TZ. It's rated at, I think, a 1.8 horsepower, which is a lot for a 0.18 engine, believe it or not. Um, they are really easy to tune. The carburetors are fantastic. They almost never lose a tune. They don't get clogged and they're just very predictable. These engines run really well. By that I mean they don't tend to overheat much. I remember the 2.5 engines used to always run hot and they, they barely held a tune properly. Um, other than that, this is a really cool RC. If you're looking to get something like this, like let's say a 10th scale on the used market, the prices have come down a lot. And in reality, in terms of chassis design, it is not that much different from a brand new uh, Nitro Rebo. Um, of course, if you're looking for electric, this is a completely different issue. Uh, running on gas, well, I should say a, a Nitro RC is totally different. But you do have a lot of joy running these, and that is something that I've actually uh, have been looking forward to. The under chassis design is also really nice here. You can tell the way the engine is mounted. It has kind of this diagonal plate coming across. Uh, really cool design. I never had any problems with the engine screw stripping, which uh, if you ran nitros, you would know uh, is usually a problem. What else could we say? You have pretty heavy duty drive shafts. I've never broken any drive shafts here. The steering mechanism is actually really good as I showed you earlier, but other than the fact that the servo was replaced, there's very minimal slop. So as, I, as you could tell, I moved the wheels. Really minimal slop. This thing goes down the line pretty straight. And uh, that's also something that I like about it. The way that the engine is balanced, you could tell that even the engine is angled inward. So you have a lot of this uh, momentum and the cent low center of gravity, the way things are mounted, that you basically don't have that much torque steer here. That's what I've noticed. I'm not sure quite of the, the, the way the physics work here, but the way the engine is mounted, the vibrations are uh, dissipated more effectively and efficiently. You have a really cool rear exhaust setup. Uh, so not only is the engine rear exhaust, but you have this cool aluminum pipe that uh, goes down towards the back. Now, typically, uh, trucks would have a side type exhaust here. I don't mean the engine had side exhaust, I mean the exhaust would exit on the side. What would happen is your whole rear system here, the whole rear wheel and rear uh, drivetrain would constantly be dirty. All the time you would have to wash it. Uh, this design is really effective and, and very realistic, I gotta say, I do like it. The newest version that I saw on the Traxxas website of the Revo 3.3 comes with the Traxxas Stability Management and of course OptiDrive, you also have Reverse. Uh, those are really cool and I gotta say for a nitro truck, I don't, I don't personally think you need all that. If you're looking for all that technology, just go get yourself a regular brushless RC and you'll be fine. For a nitro, the most important thing is that your engine idles fine, it doesn't overheat. Uh, your idle speed is set correctly and the thing just drives normally. Um, that is what this thing does. Uh, I remember years ago, Nitro used to be pretty much that's what everyone did. Electric at that time, uh, before the release of the Revo, was just not popular. Uh, the brushless systems were just extremely expensive. My first brushless system was a Novak GTB. Uh, very expensive and also Novak Supersport. A really good RC, uh, well, really good system that I had, I think, on a associated TC3, it was really fast at that time, but you know, a LiPo battery at that time was probably 40 to $50. Uh, that was a lot of money. So I gave you guys some background and history and my personal opinions on this truck. Let's watch some of the videos I took uh, driving this. And I was surprised that it actually wheelied with this engine. Uh, I remember the regular 2.5R couldn't wheelie. And this had no problem pulling wheelies, it was fine. And a nitro truck, that's actually kind of hard because these things are pretty heavy. If you ever picked up a nitro truck with an aluminum chassis like this, you would know that this is at least three times heavier than any current brushless RC. And for a .18 engine to do to do a wheelie, I mean, that's, that's something exciting there. And that is just the power of the OS engine, 18TZ.